March 17th, St. Patrick. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. When we think of St. Patrick, we usually think of parades, shamrocks, green drinks, and corned beef and cabbage. Everyone is Irish on St. Patrick's Day. But Patrick wasn't Irish, and he wasn't Patrick. He was born Patricius, somewhere in Romanized Britain, to a wealthy family. And in his early years, he wasn't particularly saintly either. His family was Christian, but he was indifferent to Christianity. But Patrick was humble, tenacious, and brave. When he was 16, Irish raiders kidnapped him from the family villa and sold him into slavery in Ireland. There, he spent six bleak years as a herdsman. Later, Patrick was ordained as a bishop, and he evangelized Ireland in spite of opposition, both from local pagan druids and from Christians in Britain. His success in Christianizing Ireland was so great that the formerly pagan island sent missionaries to the continent and contributed to the spread of Christianity across Europe. Patrick also expanded literacy throughout Ireland, and he influenced laws in favor of women, the poor, and slaves. On this date, in the late 5th century, Patrick died. Here is part of his story. A praying man opens the door to supernatural activity. When St. Patrick was only 16 years old, he was kidnapped by pirates who sold him to a tribal chief who isolated him on a mountain in Ireland. Without enough clothing to keep him warm, he was forced to herd sheep and the sheep's pastures were bitterly cold and isolated. Though Patrick's parents were Catholic, he said he didn't really believe in God. But enslaved and alone, Patrick started to talk to God. He said there was no one else to talk to. Soon, he developed a habit of praying throughout the day and sometimes into the night. For six years, Patrick worked alone for the chieftain. But one night, as Patrick was sleeping, God spoke to him in a dream. He told Patrick that he had been serving him well and would soon be returned to Britain. Patrick then heard a voice say that his ship was ready. It was grand to hear a promise from God, but the port was 200 miles away. He talked to God about it, and God gave him strength and wisdom. Patrick decided to sneak out and make the long trek to the port. When he finally arrived, he found a ship, but the captain refused to let him aboard. Patrick responded with the one thing God had always worked through, prayer. Before he finished praying, a group of men arrived and began to talk to him. It was the crew of the captain who had originally sent Patrick away. The captain had changed his mind and decided to allow Patrick to come aboard and sail with them to Britain. After three days, they found land. But as Patrick and the crew made their way to the shoreline, they realized that only wilderness lay before them. There was no civilization in sight. Hoping to find a village or a town, they searched the landscape, but found only empty wilderness. Hours turned into days, days turned into weeks. Nearly a month passed by, and they still wandered, unable to find civilization. Hunger ravaged the men, and many were close to death. The crew grumbled. How were they to survive? The captain demanded of Patrick, as a Christian, you say your God is great and good and almighty, so why don't you pray for us who are perishing of hunger, where the face of men is hardly seen? God had given Patrick strength in his time of need. Could God do the same for them? The crew put God and Patrick's prayers to the test. In response, Patrick spoke to them with great conviction, telling them they needed to turn from their sinful ways and come to God for his provision. 
Suddenly, something rumbled in the distance. The men looked up in that direction, and a great herd of pigs thundered down the road. The men cheered and yelled and ran to catch the pigs. They took in so many pigs for food that even the crew's dogs were able to eat. For two days, they replenished their energy and got strong enough to finish the journey to find civilization. 1 Timothy 2.8 says, Therefore, I want men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. The men praised God and thanked him and turned from their unbelief. After another month, Patrick finally made it back home. God had been true to his word and provided for him every step of the way. How might prayer give you the strength to do something you need to do? A praying man opens the door to supernatural activity. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.